Yeah, I think uh, uh, we can start the session, uh, Anshu. Yeah. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Anshul Chaudhary. Uh, I basically am the product manager for the health facility registry, and this call is being kept uh, primarily to align everyone on the steps that need to be followed for uh, uh, like onboarding any health facility into the registry. This is one of the prerequisites before you can uh, maybe uh, you know before you can link your HMI systems in a full fledged manner. So let us take you through the processes once. It's a small presentation for five minutes. After that, we will directly jump into the APIs related walkthrough. So uh, I hope all of you are aware as to uh, what HFR is and what are the benefits, etc. So I, I won't really uh, uh, spend time on that, but basically any healthcare facility that exists in India can be uh, onboarded into HFR. It can be right from a hospital to the lowest level that is a pharmacy. Uh, any facility can be onboarded. So it's applicable for in government set uh, when you have government different facility type classifications will be there like hospitals, uh, CHCs, PHCs, sub centers. While in private case, you will have hospitals, clinics, labs, uh, imaging centers, and pharmacies. Broadly, these are these will be the main focus areas. So, frankly, uh, when you are onboarding into uh, basically the ABDM ecosystem, the first step I believe almost everyone of you has done is. You have applied for a certain uh, on the sandbox.abdm.gov.in website for access credentials and been provided certain documentation for whitelisting as well as port opening of the uh, various ABDM URLs. Once that is done, to access or uh, let's say declare any facility in HFR, you will need to integrate two sets of APIs. One is for the ID system. Presently, it's the healthcare professional ID system. Uh, so any facility is mapped to a 14 digit healthcare professional ID as on today's date. And the second set of APIs will be for the uh, health facility registry itself. So based on these two particular sets of APIs, you can submit the facility in HFR and then even declare the bridge uh, that will link the facility to your respective application. All this needs to be done and tested out in the sandbox environment first. Uh, Sandbox environment for facilities, facility sbx.abdm.gov.in. And uh, once you're successfully tested and you get the clearance, uh, you can deploy to production. Now, till now, the APIs that have been released have been, uh, let's say, limited in certain aspect that uh, they were not including all the uh, parameters that were available in the health facility registry. So now the APIs that we have released uh, will cover each and every attribute that is available in HFR as of now. We are going to, uh, I'm taking you through two processes that you can think of it. Oh, one case is when facilities might have already directly registered on the health facility registry from the front end, how you can link those. And second is the case wherein facilities are not yet uh, part of ABDM or not yet registered in ABDM, but you can through your uh, HMIS or LMIS interface, you can uh, directly allow them to create the healthcare professional or link the healthcare professional ID in the, that interface itself, as well as submit the facility from your interface only. Uh, after the integration is done, ideally, if it's uh, everything is uh, like uh, both from a user experience perspective as well as the integration perspective, perspective if everything is work working perfectly, a facility will not really have the need to come to the health facility registry portal itself. Everything can be managed from your system only. So we have the, in the first, uh, let's assume a, this can be any HMIS uh, panel. So basically what we will be asking is uh, you can, uh, or what you can ask the uh, respective uh, facility manager or the person who's accessing the uh, HMIS system is whether the facility is registered in ABDM or not. If this, uh, and this you'll basically be doing after check if there is a, let's say, a value pertaining to the facility ID of HFR not reflecting in a portal post integration. So if they answer yes, then you can ask them to enter the facility ID. 
we will provide APIs through which based on a facility ID, you can pull the facility's name, manager's name, their healthcare professional ID number, mobile number and email. Uh, at this stage, they will need to authenticate, which can be done by an SMS as well as email OTP, which will be sent through the ABDM system only. And once the authentication is successful, you can link both the healthcare professional ID number as well as the facility ID in your system. You can map it out and you can consider that that facility is linked. After that, you can uh, at this stage in the back end, you can also uh, link your bridge uh, via an API call. The second case is where the facility is not registered in HFR. So when the user says, uh, is your facility registered? When the user has answered no, you can ask them to proceed with registration. So first step is you need to get the user to enter their healthcare professional ID. Either they're already having it or they can register. So there is a set of APIs that has been published by the ID team for this entire activity. So if, if uh, I'm covering a case over here wherein uh, we will, will be going to register a healthcare professional ID. So a user can be asked to enter their Aadhaar number. Uh, give approval to the consent that is there. An OTP will be sent across. Once that is validated, the healthcare professional ID is generated. But at this stage. Thora sakar. Thora. Thora kya, sorry. Uh, Anshul, uh, I think certain people are requesting for a conversation. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you just repeat uh, what you wanted to ask? I think uh, Anshul, uh, certain people are requesting this conversation. If you can do uh, that would help them. You can. Sorry, I'm not able to get the second part. Oh, I, I'm saying, is it audible now? Yeah, you're audible now. Yeah, so uh, certain people are requesting this conversations to be in Hindi. Uh, if that can be made, uh, uh, it will be great help. Jeepo, that is okay. fine. Uh, I'll Thank do it in both the languages, English as well as Hindi. I'll do it in both the So let me just uh, start back from uh, this particular section. So if your facility is not registered in ABDM, if your facility, health facility, Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission ka part nahi hai, so आप यहाँ पे उसको पूरा इंटरफेस में ही रजिस्टर करवा सकते हैं। आप आपको बेसिकली ये क्वेश्चन पूछना पड़ेगा कि इज़ योर फैसिलिटी रजिस्टर्ड इन एचएफआर मतलब आपकी फैसिलिटी एचएफआर में रजिस्टर्ड है कि नहीं आप ये से नो क्वेश्चन पूछ लेंगे। अगर जवाब नो आता है तो आप उसमें मेंशन कर दें कि आप उसको � आपको बेसिकली दो चीजें करनी है आपको इस पूरे प्रोसेस में दो चीजें करनी होती है एक हमारे पास हर एक फैसिलिटी एक 14 डिजिट मतलब 14 डिजिट के 14 नंबर के हेल्थ के प्रोफेशनल आईडी से लिंक होती है तो वो आपको यहां पे एंटर करना है जब आप ये हेल्थ के प्रोफेशनल आईडी नंबर डाल देंगे उसको वेरीफाई करेंगे तो ऑथेंटिकेट हम जो बोलते हैं उस समय आपका ईमेल सॉरी आपका uh, OTP जाता है आपके उसके ऊपर मोबाइल नंबर के ऊपर जो कि आपके हेल्थ के प्रोफेशनल आईडी नंबर में होता है इससे लिंक्ड होता है तो आप वो चीज ऑथेंटिकेट करेंगे तो आपको लिंक हो जाएगा दूसरा अगर आपके पास हेल्थ के प्रोफेशनल आईडी नंबर नहीं है तो आप क्लिक हियर टू रजिस्टर जो लिखा हुआ आप उस पे क्लिक करेंगे आप ये जो इंटरफेस आप किसी भी लैंग्वेज में आप अपने उसमें बिल्ड कर सकते हैं क्योंकि ये आपका इंटरफेस होगा तो जैसे आप रजिस्ट्रेशन पे क्लिक करेंगे आपको एक जो सेक्शन खुलेगा वहां पे आपको अपना आधार नंबर डालना है आप जब अपना आधार नंबर डालेंगे आप उसमें के बाद जो कंसेंट आ रही है वो आप पढ़ेंगे कंसेंट पढ़ने के बाद आप बेसिकली कंसेंट ये कहते हैं कि ये आपका आधार नंबर डल रहा है किस पर्पस के लिए यूज होगा कैसे यूज होएगा वो सारा कंसेंट में लिखा होता आप पढ़ के उसके बाद सबमिट करेंगे उस टाइम पे आपका मोबाइल नंबर जो आधार से लिंक्ड है उसके ऊपर ओटीपी आता है वो एंटर करना है वो एंटर करने के बाद आपका एक हेल्थ के प्रोफेशनल आईडी बेसिक जेनरेट हो जाएगा मतलब ऑथेंटिकेट हो जाएगी प्रोफाइल इसके अगले स्टेप में आपका 
कुछ डिटेल्स आते हैं आधार से जैसे कि आपका डेट ऑफ बर्थ आता है एड्रेस आता है नाम जेंडर फोटोग्राफ सब कुछ जो आधार से आ रही है वो सारा का सारा इसमें कैप्चर हो जाएगा अगले स्टेप में आप जब अपना हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल आईडी नंबर बना रहे हैं आपको अपना मोबाइल नंबर फिर से डाल के ऑथेंटिकेट करना है ये इसलिए क्योंकि आधार से हमारे पास मोबाइल नंबर फुल पूरा प्लेन टेक्स वैल्यू में आता नहीं है इसलिए हमें फिर से एंटर करके स्टोर करना पड़ता है यहाँ पे सेम मोबाइल नंबर आइडियली डालिए जो कि आपके आधार में भी डला हुआ है फिर आपको अपना ई मेल डाल के ऑथेंटिकेट करना है दोनों ही स्टेप में ओ टी ऑथेंटिकेशन है क्योंकि कई बार लोग कोई स्पेलिंग मिस्टेक कर देते हैं कोई एरर आ जाता है जिससे कि गलत एंट्री हो जाती है तो इसलिए ऑथेंटिकेशन रखी हुई है फाइनली आपको एक हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल आईडी एलियास जो बोलते हैं एड्रेस बोलते हैं जैसे आपका नाम हो सकता है जैसे यहाँ पे आप कह सकते हैं कोई भी आपका जो फर्स्ट नेम है एट एच या फिर अगर आप यूज करना चाहें आपका ईमेल अगर आपको याद करने में आसान रहता है तो फिर आप जो ईमेल में यूज करते हैं उसका फ्रंट वाला पोर्शन यूज करते हैं एट द रेट से पहले कुछ भी कर सकते हैं बट ये एक बार जब आपका हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल आईडी एलिया से एड्रेस बन गया वो चेंज नहीं होता तो ये चीज का ध्यान रखना है ये सब करने के बाद आप जब सबमिट कर देते हैं यहाँ पे तो आपका हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल आई नंबर बन जाएगा इसके बाद जो नेक्स्ट स्टेप है जो अगला स्टेप है यहाँ पे आपको एच एफ आर के एपीएस और बैकेट में पूरे इंटीग्रेट करेंगे आपकी हेल्थ केयर फैसिलिटी रजिस्ट्री में अब जो हमने फील्ड्स कम करी हैं मुश्किल से अगर आप हॉस्पिटल का फॉर्म देखेंगे तो उसमें मैंडेटरी फील्ड मतलब एड्रेस फील्ड्स वगैरह सब कुछ मिला के आपका मैंडेटरी फील्ड मतलब 30 से भी कम है वैसे तो मतलब मैं आपको मैंडेटरी कंडीशन मैंड डिवाइड करके और कम बता सकता हूँ बट लेके चलिए आपकी फील्ड थर्टी से भी कम है इस समय जिसमें से आपकी एड्रेस फील्ड ही ऑलमोस्ट स्टेट के साथ जो एलजीडी कोड होता है डिस्ट्रिक्ट का एलजीडी कोड होता है उस टाइप से फील्ड्स हैं तो आपको जब अभी एपीआई के थ्रू ले जा रहे हैं दिखा देंगे बट आप इस स्टेप पे आपका एपीआई इंटीग्रेटेड रहेगा फॉर एच एफ आल्सो सो क्या होएगा आप यूजर को बोल रहे हैं प्रोसीड विद सबमिशन एंड लिंकेज ऑफ ए फैसिलिटी तो बेसिकली आप अपनी फैसिलिटी को सबमिट करेंगे और लिंकेज मतलब ब्रिज आई को लिंक लिंक करने के लिए परमिशन दे रहा यूजर आप इस स्टेप पे एच के ए को कॉल करेंगे जो आपने एपीएस कंज्यूम कर रखे हैं और आप सिस्टम में फैसिलिटी को सबमिट करेंगे अगर कोई डुप्लीकेट नहीं है तो उस टाइम पे आपकी फैसिलिटी जनरेट हो जाएगी आपको फैसिलिटी आईडी मिल जाएगा फैसिलिटी आईडी मिलने के बाद आप ब्रिज लिंकेज करना चाहें तो इसी स्टेप पे कर भी सकते हैं साथ साथ तो ये एक बेसिक प्रोसेस बनाया है इसमें हम ये नहीं कह रहे कि आपकी आपके यूजर को एच पे आना पड़ेगा रादर आप अपने सिस्टम में ही फुल फैसिलिटी दे सकते हैं कि सारा आपका जो यूजर की कन्वीनियंस के हिसाब से एक्सपीरियंस के हिसाब से वहां पे ही आप पूरा मतलब सब कुछ बिल्ड इन कर सकते हैं तो एपीआई जो कंज्यूम करने हैं आपको नेक्स्ट स्टेप में मेरी टीम में से मानिका हैं जो कि आपको इसके इसके थ्रू टेक थ्रू करेंगी अभी मानिका ने लेना दोनों करेंगे आपकी जब फैसिलिटी सबमिट हो गए हो जाएगी आपको फैसिलिटी आई भी मिल जाएगा प्लीज इसको अपने सिस्टम में स्टोर करके रखिएगा एंड ये चीज इससे आपकी फैसिलिटी की मैपिंग रहेगी ये इसकी कॉपी हमारे पास भी रहेगी कि ऑफ कोर्स हमारे सिस्टम में क्योंकि फैसिलिटी आईडी जनरेट होता है तो हम भी ये मैप करके रखेंगे कौन से सिस्टम से आया है एंड जैसे ही आपने फैसिलिटी जनरेट हो गई है उसके कुछ ही देर में ये पब्लिक सर्च में भी विजिबल हो जाता है सारे जितने भी इंटीग्रेटर्स है मैंने यहाँ पे कुछ आपके डेफ फोरम पे क्वेश्चन देखे थे कि फैसिलिटी अप्रूव नहीं हो रही है बाकी सब चीजें लिखी हुई थी तो एक चीज में क्लियर करना चाहूंगा दिसंबर या जनवरी में ही आपका प्रोसेस अपडेट हो गया था कि आप जब फैसिलिटी सबमिट कर देते हैं उसके बाद आप उसको सॉफ्टवेयर लिंकेज कर सकते हैं आपको फैसिलिटी की वेरिफिकेशन के लिए वेट नहीं करना पड़ता कि आपकी फैसिलिटी वेरीफाई होगी फिर आप लिंक कर पाएंगे ऐसा कुछ नहीं है एज सुन एज सबमिट अ फैसिलिटी आप उसकी लिंकेज कर पाएंगे ठीक है अगर कोई क्वेश्चंस है इसके अंदर तो अभी ले लेते हैं वरना पहले एपीआई पर देख लेते हैं उसके बाद फिर क्वेश्चंस ले लेते हैं जैसा आप चाहें अंशुल आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन इफ दैट्स फाइन या या सो एक्चुअली आई वांट टू नो दैट इज दिस द प्रोसेस दैट वी हैव टू फॉलो इफ वी वांट टू रजिस्टर अ फैसिलिटी यूजिंग अ नोडल कांटेक्ट एज़ वेल using a nodal contact uh, what how do you define a nodal contact over here can i just understand uh, is it like a one person uh, registering let's say hundreds of facilities yes yes so 
सी यू कैन रियली डू दैट बट इन दैट केस आपका दिस इंटरफेस do you uh, before i answer this question do you envisage giving this uh, let's say uh, uh, control of the facility to each and every facility manager or do you envisage keeping all the control at your end only no so actually uh, recently we received a document which said that there's a capability of us now being able to register facilities using an oral contact and then we can transfer it to the facility manager directly correct Correct. So uh, we we want to do that. So the idea is that we'll uh, we'll make the facility IDs and then we'll transfer the control to the facility manager directly. But then uh, I think the flow that we just covered right now that was that was where the facility is registering themselves using our system. But can we do it for the facilities using an oral contact? See, you can do it. Basically, you will need to map somebody from your team as the uh, facility manager. It will be their responsibility that the facility details that are being submitted are correct, and then you can individually transfer across to the respective facility managers. Uh, frankly, that process was released, but there are certain, uh, let's say, with the APIs that are being provided, you can definitely do that because at okay. the end of the day, well. you're just calling that particular api against a healthcare professional id number so how uh, what i showed you as an interface which can be the ideal go to scenario for the market in general but however way you want to design it like uh, whether you want to uh, put all the facilities against one id or have individual uh, facility hp id against each and every facility that is a call that the respective integrator can take based on their feasibility okay so there's no restriction on that end now what i will suggest is uh, what happens when you uh, push all the facilities let's say hundreds of thousands of facilities are being submitted by a hrp in uh, by a single person we have okay. noticed cases jahan pe duplicates have come into the system so what happens i'll give you a simple example let's say a facility is in the name of mg hospital or mahatma gandhi hospital uh, definitely the apis while checking they will try to uh, clear out as many cases as possible but in these kinds of cases the duplicate check also fails okay it cannot be a 100% duplicate check so right. assume a scenario wherein a duplicate has been created just because it has been declared against just one facility uh, one hp id and already a facility exists on the ground so okay. this is uh, one thing that you should be able to control yeah, uh, I mean, what that, huh. no the thing is the idea is that uh, why why i want to actually know about it is because All the information that is needed, uh, according to documentation, the mandatory fields, we already stored them against the system, against a facility. So then, uh, asking them again is kind of bad no, experience. No. So the idea was that we can directly uh, do that. Yeah, yeah. So when I have showed you all this stuff, we basically uh, how you build out the user interface in that you are not really showing all the facility fields to the facility uh, manager, individual facility manager itself over there. Rather, these will already be mapped to your system fields. like yes. in the packet everything is mapped you yes. just have to provide an experience where it it can be just a few buttons that need yeah. to be clicked and nothing yeah. else so that is yeah. the thing it is just for I your explanation as to what is happening over here yeah i got that so the okay i think uh, we can go ahead with the api uh, uh, yeah using that you have after that we can discuss it actually i had a few doubts so yes yes definitely yeah. no worries okay and any other questions also we can definitely address see at the end of the day we want to make the user experience as friendly as possible both for uh, integrators as well as the actual facility managers so right that's the intention i do not want them to be even though uh, we have the front end interface over here we are also constantly redefining that but rather uh, a person feels much more comfortable just using one system they do not really want to uh, right. switch from one place to another so we we also understand that and that's why the complete set of apis will be released and the documentation also published across so don't really just depend on the early documentation fresh documentation will be shared uh, okay. once this call is done and the feedback that comes across through today and uh, tomorrow that is also if anything needs to be incorporated we'll do that and then release the documentation along with it okay okay, okay. okay. and just one quick question actually uh, in order to for us to uh, do any of the either flows uh, to the normal contact or directly through a uh, healthcare professional id is there any role that is needed to be assigned to our client id uh so manika will better answer that when once she is running through the demo i think the role is hfr uh, okay. but uh, uh, let manika run you through the apis at that point of time uh, we can just address this question yeah okay 
okay no worries no worries thank you yeah so manika nilinda the floor is yours you can start thank you anshul good afternoon everybody i am the developer from hfr and i'll just take you all through the apis that we have constructed to onboard the facilities so we have a document in place with us wherein we have just just given a detailed description of all the apis and what all apis are present for your integration so um there is one search facility uh, if the integrators have already uh, you know gone through the doc earlier document it has been in place for a long time so basically this will highlight um, all the facilities with a certain criteria that you can search for and uh, next now to onboard apis we have two types of uh, two sets of apis one is is with minimal data field but we would recommend that you incorporate the detailed infrastructure uh, detailed uh, information apis so in this detailed information apis we have covered almost all the fields that are actually present on our front end form as well okay so um proceeding with this now the this set of apis consists of four major apis yahan pe char hamari important apis present hain and depending on certain parameters we will it is decided which api needs to be called next so yahan pe aapke basically kuch ek aisa parameter rahega which is jo decide karega ki next api kaun si call honi chahiye so i'll just take give you a brief description from the document and then we'll head on to the swagger part so we if the first one which we have is basic facility information api now first thing uh before proceeding with the apis you need to have an hpr id hpr id is basically a healthcare professional id so uh isse pehle ki aap apis uh, integrate karna start kare hfr ki in your system aapke paas ek healthcare professional id hona zaruri hai and along with that uska password bhi aap chahe set karke rakhe to it will be more feasible so telling you about these two points that are important first one is create hpr id you need to have an hpr id with in handy with you second one is you need to head to hpr id swagger portal and you need to fetch a token from there theek hai so these two are primary steps to integrate the first api the basic facility information api is the primary step it needs to be done irrespective of any values or dependencies that may incur next so uh, this is a parameter description table either jitne bhi parameters yahan likhe hue hain this is uh, a detailed description about them telling you what the parameter refers to and whether it is mandatory or not what format is being followed so in a number of places you will find accepted codes as specified in the master api so hfr actually has a master api data set uh this is also available on our swagger portal under utility section so this is facility sbx swagger site we have onboarding apis we have search apis and we have utilities so utilities will give you all the master data sets wherever we have mentioned that we'll be accepting only codes it is advised that you head on to the utility section and fetch the respective code for the uh, value so for example ownership may we accept a certain set of ownership codes and then we have a uh, state so state may we are accepting only the lgd directory spe specified ids uh, next so uh, the facility basic information api will cover all the basic data that a facility can have for example its demographic data what type of facility it is whether it's a hospital or a college or a pharmacy what ownership it belongs to whether it's a government facility or a private and uh, then we are asking certain contact details basically uh, who the contact person not the contact person facilities contact information the email id the landline number mobile number etc website then we are asking what are the system of medicines that they allow uh, apart from system of medicine 
सो सिस्टम ऑफ मेडिसिन में वी आर अलाइंग ऑल द आयुष मेडिसिन अलॉन्ग विद मॉडर्न मेडिसिन एलोपैथी यूनानी सिद्धा सोवा रिक्पा एक्सेट्रा next up we have is type of service basically it means whether you are uh, an ipd uh, facility opd or a day care facility now an, an important parameter that we have is the operational status so there are certain operational statuses that we have the most primary one being functional so if your facility is functional you need to provide another set of data if your facility is not functional you can directly go and submit the details that is how important our operational status is depending on this you will be basically filling or calling up our next set of api apart from that we have a uh, upload so basically you can provide us with your board photograph and building photograph we are accepting base 64 values here then if you are a private facility you will also need to provide us with address proof and lastly we have timings of the facility on which days you are operational basically um so that's it about our basic information api here we have a sample request body so ownership code i've taken g for government and state agency code 35 so wherever you're not providing a mandatory field it will return you an error okay so in this sample response we have a lot of errors codes error situations let's see them one by one so the response tells you ki there are errors first one being the facility district code it should not be null or empty because it's a mandatory field so you need to provide state district and sub district for sure they are mandatory the next error code the error that we received is ownership sub type cannot be null or empty now so ownership code and sub type they become mandatory so within government we have another set of ownership sub types whether you belong to the state government or the central government next uh, similarly we have facility facility operational status now it cannot be null or empty again along with null or empty you need to make sure that you provide in the valid value valid in the sense whether it should be a master or suppose a particular format is being followed so for in that sense i cannot provide uh, longitude mein uh, any value above 180 or below minus 180 uh, so facility operational status cannot be null or empty it should belong to any of the master set values that we have provided under the utilities tab similarly you will get all the error codes or error status messages according to what Uh, mistakes you've done in calling the api then we have another set this is the exact uh, perfect uh, request body that we have attached here there are no errors so once you successfully call an api you'll get a response in this format now basic facility information when you call this api we basically create an instance of your api and save all this data in return you'll get a unique identification number for your facility now please remember when you are calling the basic info api it only means that you have created an instance basically this facility goes into the draft stage this does not mean that the integration is completed all right so this id which is returned to you 820 in this sample you need to save this id as a tracking id for this facility now this 820 id needs to be used for all the further apis that you are consuming for example next api which which we have is additional facility information and this 820 i need to pass in this facility id now then only it will actually update your data set similarly if you already have a tracking id and you wish to update any of the data in this uh, api then you can provide us with your facility id provide us with the tracking id under this key all right so now if your facility is functional that means the operational status key has a value f then you need to consume this api additional information api also please note we have another uh, note in this 
Hmm. So depending on the value that we are providing in facility operational status, the next API will be called. So if it is operational, that means the value is F, F for functional. Then you will be consuming additional API, then detailed information, and then finally you will call the submit API. But in case the facility operational status key has any value apart from F, then you can directly head on to the submit API. So basically there are certain set of questions which we asked only if your facility is currently functional. That's all. So next we have the additional facility, additional information. Here we are asking whether your facility uh, has a dialysis center, whether it's available for only the inpatients or as well as the outpatients or whether it's available or not completely. So there is, we have dialysis center, we have pharmacy, blood bank, cat lab, diagnostic center, imaging center, etc. And then apart, then next set of questions which we have is some IT related questions, whether your facility uses an uh, HMIS or EMR system. If yes, then what is the name of the system? And if our data set does not have that particular name, then you can select any other and provide us with your uh, alphanumeric string, which basically tells what's the name of the system. Similarly, whether the if you have pharmacy or if your facility has a pharmacy, then what is the information system if they use any? And next, if you are a diagnostic lab or an imaging center, or if your facility has a diagnostic lab or an imaging center, then the, what is the LMIS or IRIS system if used? Next set of information in this API is certain linked program IDs. Uh, so for example, we have a national health resource repository, national identification number, ABPMJ ID, et cetera. So we have certain set of IDs that we are saving in our system. If you do have a value for, uh, if you do have your facility registered in any of these systems, you can provide us with the uh, corresponding ID as well. So uh, this is again a sample response that we have here. Uh, again, so certain errors have been in kept in place in this request body and the corresponding error codes are present here. So similarly, next API which we have is the detailed information. Again, it follows the same pattern. We ask certain questions and you need to just, just uh, check the description and whether it's required or not. And if, if you do have a value for the required fields, you need to have a value for the required field, sorry for that. You need to send it in the required format. So in this uh, detailed information, we are basically asking for every system of medicine, whether there are specializations offered in your facility. So uh, system of medicine code you need to provide what you have already entered in the basic information API. And then you need to tell whether you have specializations available. And then you need to provide, if yes, you need to tell me what all the specialities are. So HFR has a predefined set of specialities present in it. And we have get specialities API to provide you with the master set of those specialities. So in that this case, you need to provide me comma separated codes for those specialities which are available at your facility. Next up, we have certain infrastructure related questions and amongst all these questions, the mandatory one is total number of ventilators uh, and total beds. Total number of beds. So we are asking you whether if you are, if you do offer IPD services, then what is the count of IPD beds without oxygen, count of IPD beds with oxygen, etc. So all the beds account accumulates in total number of beds. Even if you do not provide us individual bed count, you do need to give us the total number of bed counts and total number of ventilators. Um, apart from that, now if you if you do offer pharmacy services or if you are a pharmacy in its uh, as a facility itself, so you need to uh, mandatorily provide me this data which is specific to your pharmacy. Basically, we are asking whether um, 
your pharmacy is a jan aushadhi kendra if it is so if it's yes then you need to provide the jan aushadhi kendra id then next your drug license number gst number and the pharmacist registration number so all the mandatory fields are mentioned here and if they are based on any condition we have also written that next set of information we are asking is blood bank so if your facility offers blood bank services or if you are a blood bank then you need to answer this set of data similarly if you are if you do offer imaging services or if you are in imaging center then this section becomes mandatory similarly same goes for diagnostic lab now once you are done with these three apis or depending on your operational status whether you are functional or not the last api that needs to be consumed irrespective of any parameter is the submit details so submit details me you need to give me the facility id this is basically the tracking id which was returned in basic information api which we've been using so far and along with that source of information and source unique id so this source of information value will be provided by the hfr system with certain uh, parameters so basically once you consume this api your facility will get submitted in hfr system if you want your facility to be marked as a verified entity you need to connect with the hfr team they'll provide you a unique code for that and that unique code needs to be sent in here source of information now once you have consumed this api and the facility id is the mandatory key idhar in response you will be receiving a um 12 character or 10 character unique id this is basically the facility id which will be used in all further integration with other modules so you need to keep track of two primary keys one is the tracking id returned in the basic information response and second is the facility id actually which will be used to integrate with the other modules in abdm ecosystem and this is the once you have this id generated you can use this to update any information within hfr as well so now coming to the swagger portal so we have onboarding apis so we'll be actually going through basic information additional uh, details and submit arva so, here can i have a question now on this facility id yes part? sir hmm, sure uh, so um uh i would request uh, intakab also to add in uh, because we both are together in a particular thing um we have uh, centers across the states of uh, multiple states and there will be huge number of health and wellness connection centers that is going to be there now when we register ourselves for this facility id should we do it for each and every wellness center across every district etc or how do, how is that we should uh, take it up because this yeah. is going to be a critical to thing that, yeah just to add on to that recently we have got the prod key and uh, thank you uh, to the entire abdm team for that but this just uh, question that arises is that uh, if we have to deploy the solution across the facilities in the states so there could be close to 4000 4500 plus facilities so could we go ahead with the single prod key or do you have to register each of the health facility uh, how should we go about it so let me uh, take this particular question so, yeah. so basically i want to understand uh, like uh, which entity you are representing is it in uh, government health program or is it an hmis solution you are representing uh, right now it's it's an hmis solution uh, we are mm -hmm. from piramal first yeah basically Excellent. we are closely working with uh, uh, state governments to ensure that the hms solution is provided to them so for example in bihar and assam we have provided uh, uh, our amrit platform as a hms solution in the lower health facilities and we are intending to actually uh, go with the abdm compliant uh, solution across these states okay sir understood so so in this case sir uh, ideally um, it would make sense that uh, you integrate it completely so uh, as we had um, like even before this uh, particular um, like the apis walk through and everything we had a run through that where wherein you you could modify your interface accordingly so my understanding is every facility manager will be accessing your hmis solution on a daily basis right right 
So, so it will be better you can uh, integrate completely over there and uh, the respective facility manager can update the details. So let it be separate ones for each and every facility. Like, uh, okay, okay. Am I making sense over here? So, yeah, yeah, like, yeah uh, I'm getting it. Okay, I, you are suggesting that each of the facility uh, should get the registration done first and uh, this has to be approved. Uh, right. sir, so, sir, facilities need not be approved. So facilities, once they submit data, uh, they are. you can directly link the HMI solution. Uh, they have full-fledged functionality within uh, what we call uh, ABDM as such ecosystem mm -hmm. because Frankly, we are going by the, let's say, the presumption that a facility coming through an HMIS system will already have passed through or been approved for certain vetted checks that have been done by the respective entity. So All even right. if you're entering a government facility, so government will already have given you, uh, let's say, mandate for putting the HMIS solution in place. So Absolutely. a basic uh, check is already there. So we do not really wait for a verification of a facility to ma make the linkage active. You can do it as soon as you have submitted the facility. Now, uh, the part where, where we are saying that a respective uh, facility manager should be uh, individually registered. Ideally, sir, uh, there are two things that you can do over there. Either you can ask them initially if they're registered, because uh, as you mentioned, you said Bihar and uh, one more state. So many of the facilities over there are already part of ABDM. So you can just simply ask them to enter the facility ID and just link it in the panel itself. So that will take care of your uh, major, let's say, worry right now. But in case, let's say a facility is not registered, then over there you can give them the option to register it or submit it within the system. Oh yeah, got it. Thank you so much, Anshul. Anshul, Anshul, there is one question. Arav, please correct me if this uh, what I, the I'm phrasing is correct or not. Anshul, what one of the queries what they had asked was like they have many many facilities, uh, mm -hmm. basically CHCs, PHCs, etc. Right. So what right. Arav was asking earlier is that that mm -hmm. instead of having these facility registered one by one, one by one, since every facility having a facility manager and then getting it registered, they have a central system, right? So mm -hmm. can they have the uh, facility uh, registered on a central centralized basis in the sense having only one facility manager and going ahead with the registration of the all the facilities, whatever they have in one go. So this is one of the queries they had also asked. Okay. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Yes, Meenakshi ma'am, that's correct. Yeah, uh, that will give an just... umbrella kind of a thing. Um, from yeah. a technical implementation perspective, that will also be easy because but uh, individually do we register and every ID if you want to have separate data sets and you have some kind of dicing etc at the future then individual registration would make it uh, good but if we are able to do it as an umbrella one then internally we may have to do the slicing and dicing for your analytics later on that's why that's a query that is coming up okay so let me answer this uh, particular thing also. Technically, it is possible uh, what you are envisaging because frankly, but it will depend on the respective, uh, let's say, uh, if you are basically representing for a particular government, it will be a government call. And in, of course, with the association of the HMIS that, uh, see, uh, what we need to understand over here is when you're coming from an umbrella mode, then you cannot have be asking individual facility managers to also be registering facilities otherwise on the ground. So there can't be two sets of directions that are released, one to the HMIS player and one to the respective facilities because that will create duplicates in the system. So we have to avoid that. If that can be addressed and the rest, and if you're representing a particular government uh, for a particular government, you're doing an HMIS solution uh, entity, like a single entity altogether, it is definitely possible. And uh, at a later date, if you want to, let's say, uh, transfer these facilities to respective individual facility manager, at that point of time, you can uh, maybe uh, transfer from one healthcare professional ID number of the respective uh, person, uh, like the single person, to individual facility managers, uh, healthcare professional ID. That transfer also you can do, but even at that point of time, you will need to integrate the, your system. So. One method, your umbrella mode is helpful for adoption perspective right now in a rapid mode, uh, while from a data analysis perspective or for having a better administrative control, at some point of time you might need to, uh, let's say, transfer the facilities across. But it's totally a call, it's an administrative call, you can uh, think of it this way. It's not a technical call, it's an administrative call in this case. 
technically uh, everything is possible no uh, the the intent of the question is see if i start registering each and every thousands and thousands would be because across india if we are pan india if you look at it every state government and mm -hmm. the health and wellness centers that is going to be there it's be it will be hum, uh, humongous that numbers will be very high uh, but uh, the number of uh, health uh, healthcare records that is going to be uh, you know the longitudinal health record will be um, under that uh, particular um, health and wellness center or the particular point in future when you look at the volume of the data and people moving from one village to another village etc and then having their continuity plan uh, mm -hmm. so accordingly what would you suggest because looking at it from that angle would you uh, suggest it to be individually placed uh, from your uh, design perspective or uh, an umbrella mode will be m more appropriate uh, i mean that's the thing which we need to okay, understood from a records perspective so yes. uh, um, so um, while you're focusing on the health and wellness sectors i agree over there it can be a challenge uh, so uh, okay so uh, i might not be the best uh, person alone to answer this question uh, because this has larger implications but uh, this is just my personal opinion not the opinion of abdm as such what i'm saying right now but it will be better that uh, to have records linked to the respective facilities itself because uh, what happens is at some point of time if an individual wants to link their records to an individual facility and even if he migrates across uh, considering uh, like uh, the portability uh, like interoperability and all it should not really be a issue later on also that's what my thought process or assumption is i might be wrong but uh, somebody who's uh, handling the uh, gateway and the records part no, can better address this query uh, yeah that's okay if you can get this uh, answer later on also fine because this is something going to be realized uh, in the coming future because that's a bulk uh, deployment which will happen it is also some time to be uh, there but i i agree on a certain aspect that whatever the decision because i uh, know for a matter of fact arvo was talking that technically it is uh, possible which you have also agreed on but this has to be again an administrative call that we have to jointly uh, take uh, uh, with uh, in consideration with the state's decision I completely go on that thought. So it will be helpful also if we could, um, you know, have one kind of a, um, you know, uh, knowledge sharing session on this particular area alone, which, uh, you know, which we are going to f uh, face uh, maybe in a couple, uh, few months from now. Once we are going full fl full fledged, and you will have the health bridge also in place. That yeah. is where I'm envisaging this particular issue. Understood, sir. Uh, Minakshi, maybe you can uh, note down this point and uh, have your team noted down, and uh, uh, it can be taken up with uh, Director IT, sir, and uh, addressed it separately because this is more from a let's say uh, uh, adoption perspective per se, like uh, not just registration of facilities alone, but even uh, how the records are to be treated in the future and the interoperability issues that might crop up. Yeah, that's right. Actually, they uh, this is especially um, they have their existence in 21 states and they are they have received their production key last uh, this Friday. So they are they are due to go live. So this is one uh, place where they are stuck, whether should we go in a centralized manner or all the facilities to at the same time. So this is one question that we were posed with. Right. Lenny, so, I am uh, open. I understood the question, but it's uh, frankly, as we explained, it's a let's say an administrative decision because frankly, if That's you do right. it in an umbrella mode, there is a high chance of duplicates creeping in that uh, that we have already observed with one of the integrators. So that's uh, right. That's right. Even yeah. we had suggested earlier that it should be in the centralized mode, but but then yes, it is always nice to have a decision taken up by the NHA leadership. Yeah. Not just uh, it won't be as NHL when it will be respective state governments also. Of course, definitely. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I can see two hands raised. Uh, one from Ayush and one from. Uh, yeah. Thank you. We'll uh, discuss it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And Arva Mudan. Yeah. Yeah. Arva Mudan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Arva Mudan. Sorry. Sorry for pronouncing wrong. No issues. I Arvai. think our so, question is answered. We will uh, actually keep on discussing about it. But thank you, Ansul and Minakshi. 
for explaining that. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank Arav, you. I would, I would, uh, as suggested earlier, I would sincerely request you to just uh, shoot an email with regards to this. That would help us uh, take it up. Of course, this has already been raised earlier, but it sure. would be uh, helpful if you can just shoot an email uh, with this regard. That would be a yes, great help. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sure, I'll do that. Yeah. Thank so, you. so any other questions are there apart from this? Uh, yeah, I actually have a question. Yeah, yeah so um, actually Manika already, uh, I think she, she highlighted the part where we take a token and we hit the uh, HFR uh, APIs, right? So the worry is that we try doing it and uh, for some reason it always throws 401 for our request. Manika, would you be able to answer that? OK, so um, I explain it to you once again. If I miss uh, a step where your error is creeping in, let me know once again. OK, OK, no worries. OK, so before we proceed uh, to integrate any of these APIs, you actually need to head on to the HPR ID platform and generate an ID for yourself. So you need to generate uh, an ID using facility manager option, HFR. And then you can either select Aadhaar or driving license, it's up to you. And then proceed on with all the further steps, create an HPR ID for yourself and also set your password. Now, once you have the password, we will now come on to the HPR ID Swagger portal. So here we have authentication tab. This may we have the first API or the password. Now we'll try it out. I'll show you how to generate a token for authentication of your HPR ID. You need to basically first head on to this lock button and authorize the whole flow on the swagger. Uh, Manika, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think I cannot see your screen if you're sharing your screen. Uh, let me share it once again. I'll it share is it. visible for us. Okay. You can share again. No worries. No worries. Uh, is it visible now? Yeah, it is visible. Yeah, it is. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I can see it. Thank you. So I am at HPR ID Sandbox Swagger Portal, and I have just uh, scrolled into the authentication tab, V1 Auth Password API. Now, first off, you need to authenticate it. Uh, authenticate is in give the authorization credentials. You need to authorize. Let me show you, i just demonstrate. I have this uh, API given to me by the gateway team. I'm just going to use this access token. Manika, to open that authentication, you had to click on that lock icon, right? Yes. So we, this is, there's this lock icon, lock icon. You click on it and this will pop up uh, menu will open. Under that you have authorization. I just entered bearer space and this access token. Access token is coming in from the sessions API provided by the gateway team. And then you'll have uh, an API key also provided to you. I have mine here. Okay, now this is the authorization is done. Next, we'll come and try it out. Now I just have my HPR ID and password in place. I'm going to execute it. Now I just have received a token. Now this token is used somewhere in our HFR APIs as well. So, okay. Now onboarding APIs may, I'll show you the first one, basic information. Now there are two types of primary headers that we will be needing. One is the authorization and second one is X HPR ID auth. This authorization token is bearer space access token. Okay. So sessions API say you will get your access token. The authorization needs to have this value. And X HPR ID auth me, you need to enter the token generated on via the auth password API. This one. Auth password API made the token which we just generated using my HPR ID and password. This token will come here. Uh, hi, Monica. Uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt. So uh, the first step where we uh, generated XHPR ID auth uh, for that API, uh, we have generated the token, but I think we are missing some uh, role because of that we are getting 401. 
so we are okay. we are exactly what so we did uh, so when the gateway team gives you your client id and client secret which basically is used in your sessions api yeah these two values is for your client id you need to have a role hfr exactly like this string hfr needs to be assigned to your client id and how can we have that assigned actually for that you'll have to raise a request to the the gateway team who basically gives you those uh, client id and client secrets no so actually the thing is that we we our nth integration is live since a very long time now we want to add the hfr role so am i supposed to mail or like how you just Not need to same. ask them to yeah. add hfr role to your client id that's it okay okay to the gateway team good meenakshi can you just actually uh, point me out to someone who i can mail actually i'm not so sure you can just write it to integration.support actually there are some roles uh, generally in the exit form you need to define what roles you need so that would have been missed that's not a problem just send out an email to integration support we will take care of that okay okay no worries thank you so uh, on the end of this tab i just have this whole uh, request body mein data filled up so i'm just going to put in some correct values and get a tracking id generated so system of medicine you can have multiple system of medicines now how to use the utilities i'll show you that also so utilities me we have get master types okay this will like this is simple get api this will show you what all masters do exist in hfr so this is the type and this is the description of the master now system of medicine to get the list of system of medicines being used in hfr you can consume the get master data api you just need to enter the type that you need and that's it you get the code and the corresponding system of medicine so wherever in the document it is mentioned that you need to use a code with respect to the master data set please use these values so i have now system of medicine can have multiple values as a key so when you we are allowing multiple values for any particular key we are allowing them as comma separated codes so i have modern medicine allopathy we have dentistry and we have homeopathy again facility type as a code is present and under a utilities tab here fetch facility type now facility type depends on definitely it depends on your ownership code okay, and with call, system okay jee jee please call right for common handover and opportunity and with your system of medicine it can be further filtered out i'll just show you ownership government so primary uh, mandatory field is ownership uh, code is yahan pe so see for the how it depends on system of medicine is as follows now if you do select dentistry so you will only get these three fields that is dental college dental hospital and dental clinic if you also select physiotherapy or ayurveda you will be getting this particular list of uh, facility types but by default only ownership ke basis pe you can get all the facility all the facility types present in hfr so i have taken hospital here we have hospital then again you have facility sub type under hospital what all types of what is hospital are present for example district hospital area hospital central hospital etc so you have another api which will provide you with the codes of the subtypes which is fetch facility subtype so these are the subtypes so will take care district divisional etc i just taken a value 44 here now the speciality type code basically it's saying whether you are a single speciality or a multi speciality holding facility it's a non mandatory field but if you are providing a value provide with the code so all the places where we are accepting codes it is mentioned in the document and where certain validations are kept in place 
it is also mentioned in the document validations for example latitude and longitude so you need to provide a correct value lat varies from 90 to 90 long varies from 180 to minus 180 and it cannot go beyond that with six uh, decimal digits again type of service code we are accepting values and it can be multiple so type of service may we are considering only opd ipd and daycare uh, so maximum can be 3 and uh, minimum is 1 yes then we have the board photograph and building photograph we have building as a mandatory field and we are accepting base 64 value so i have certain base 64 converted values and i'm just going to use it next uh, so address proof validation comes into place if you are a private facility or a public private partnership facility it is not mandatory for a government facility so i'm going to skip it and uh, timing of facility is in array let me add another column I'm going to take Tuesday. Okay, that's it. I'll just refresh the tokens once again. This is an old tab. मीटिंग खत्म नहीं हुई वो है ही नहीं सब आवाज आ रही Uh, Anshul, uh, 
Okay. Anjul, uh, by when can we actually expect the updated um, documentation to reach us? See, uh, we are just, uh, for today, we were just taking all the queries that are there. Any, like, any feedback from any of the integrators also. If uh, there are no, no major changes as such or nothing uh, problematic crops up, uh, Wednesday we should be able to share it with you guys. No, actually the thing is that I'm not, I'm not still very clear about how uh, we'd be able to register um, a facility because uh, initially what uh, <laughs> documentation we had received, it only had one step uh, to register a facility through a nodal contact. And I think now there are a couple of steps added. So I actually wanted to have a look properly at once because we were actually planning to go live with that as well very soon. But I think now we'll have to change the plan because uh, it seems that there's a, there's a deviation in the process. See, if you want to use that umbrella mode, as I said, uh, because the earlier one would have basically uh, favored the umbrella mode of registration, right? Hmm. No, but then uh, we were still we were still going to we were still going to register them as separate entities, uh, uh -huh. using one facility ID and then bifurcating uh, and then adding their professional IDs, uh, like basically then uh, handing over the control to the facility manager. But uh, correct. So in that case. In that case, also the only challenge that was occurring, as I mentioned, was basically uh, while you would have run the patch process from your end, on the mm -hmm. ground there are like uh, I don't know which states you are currently covering, but in many states facilities have already registered. So no, so uh, we are covering Pan India actually, and the idea is that uh, all the so we already store uh, facility IDs for uh, centers which already have a facility ID. So uh, like the, 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 the chances of uh, creating a duplicate would be very low. Okay, so you can use that process also. The only thing is you can just, if possible, uh, integrate the remaining APIs or you can update them in the second call also. See, the APIs that were released earlier, they just had mm -hmm. what? They just had the uh, facility name and the state and district parameters, if I'm not wrong, or certain uh, address parameters only. It did not have any of the other uh, fields that were required for a facility. If uh, let's say your uh, deployment plan is significantly impacted by these new sets of APIs, in that case, uh, you can take a call to use the earlier ones also. Just ensure that duplicates are not created. Uh, that is the one thing that you'll need to take care of. Yeah. So, uh, so if, if I use the if I use the uh, create facility API under the facility management. Uh, uh, like set of APIs, I will get a tracking code is what was said, right? It will not create a facility. I just get a temporary draft. No, no. In no, this no. case, you will be given the facility ID starting with IN and then your state code. Correct. Exactly. This is just a minimal data set that we are capturing and we are considering this facility to be in a submitted state. So once okay, we okay. actually do submit a facility, we generate that facility ID for you. No, so I can I can do it I can do it directly using the Create Facility API also, right? Yeah, but that is the case. Right? It doesn't cover all the data fields that are envisaged in HFR. This was just so Ayush, a... yeah. So Ayush, as Manika is just mentioning, so basically while you would just have submitted partial data, there is mm -hmm. a chance that uh, due to the minimal data that's submitted across. Uh, when the facility is taken up for verification by the respective district authorities, they will see incomplete data fields and it can be rejected also. There's a chance with that. Okay. And it has okay. happened also, so that's why we came up with the remaining data, uh, remaining fields in the API itself. Okay, okay. So I think uh, then it would be better if I if we wait for the new documentation to come in because yeah. Uh, yeah, this cool, will okay, make yeah. a significant change in what you have already done because the most critical part, if you have already integrated, uh, like the HPID integration and other, other things, if you have already done that, the remaining portions are uh, pretty minimal because, see, we have tried to reduce the number of mandatory fields to the bare minimum possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the fields are optional mandatory, as uh, like uh, based on, sorry, conditional mandatory. So be based on certain conditions only, they will be triggered. So, it is uh, if you just integrate the bare minimum that is required, uh, you should be good to go. Okay. Even okay. I think you are covering even the existing API. You are covering more than seventy to eighty percent of it. So I don't think yeah. it should be a major challenge over there. Okay, no worries. Okay, I got it. I think that's that's fine. Cool. Thank you. Welcome. 
Um, so in this basic information, uh, we have a tracking ID generated for us. For all the next updates, I will be using this uh, 775 itself. So um, since my facility is marked as a functional facility, I will be next taking up the additional facility information. So I have a sample response saved with me here. I'm just going to use it. Okay, seven, seven, five. So um, I'm using all the codes that we use. So whether my facility has a dialysis center, I'm using the code that uh, follows. So this code basically you can, I'll tell you what uh, is being captured here. So get master types may we have a um, general info options. These are the basically options that we are giving uh, to the manager with respect to these questions, whether, uh, for example, whether your facility has a dialysis center. Yes, for inpatients. Yes, for everybody and no. So I'm going to uh, just give you a demonstration on that. So yes, Y A L L. Yes, available for everyone. Yes, available for inpatients only and not available for anybody. So these are the three types of option values that you will be entering in this set of questions. And if you do have an imaging center, then you'll have to tell us what are the imaging services allowed. The details of this particular key is again mentioned in the document. Then we are asking the IT question, whether your facility has an EMR or HMIS system. And if, if it is yes, then I'll need to provide a name. Then, um, Pharmacy uses a standalone information system. If this is yes, I'll have to provide the name. Again, if my facility uh, or if the diagnostic lab or the imaging services use an LMIS or RIS system, if this is yes, then I need to provide the name. Then we have certain link program IDs. All these link program IDs are non-mandatory. If you do have any ID, then please provide it uh, to the system. I will again refresh the authentication token. Okay, so this step is also done. Next, after this additional information, we have detailed. And here I'm asking about the specialties. So system of medicines that I selected in my basic information was uh, M for modern medicine allopathy, D for dentistry, and H for homeopathy. So in the specialties um, array, basically, for every system of medicine that you entered as in system of medicine code, you'll have to provide a object for each system of medicine. Then you'll need to tell us whether you have specializations available for them, yes or no. And if it is yes, then what are the specialities offered? Now with respect to these specialities that are being offered, okay. So we have an API, get specialities. Let's try it out once. So for system of medicine code, I've written HH for homeopathy. Let's see what all specialities are available. These are the ones. So every specialty available in your facility, you just need to use this particular code and send us comma separated strings under this specialities. That's it. And if it is not available, then you need not send it, not mandatory. Now, uh, medical infrastructure, since I have dentistry, we are also asking you uh, the number of dental chairs. And infrastructure basically uh, more or less depends on your type of service. IPD services, if they are there, then these questions are being captured. 
and primarily the mandatory one is the number of ventilators and the number of beds the rest all are non mandatory now pharmacy details is your uh, janoshadi is your facility a janoshadi kendra yes or no becomes mandatory had i entered uh, uh, has pharmacy me y n or y a all matlab it is present in my facility basically or if my facility type if my facility type in basic information would have been a code for pharmacy facility type code is basically this one so had it had this been a code for pharmacy or if i have pharmacy services then um this question is your facility a janoshadi kendra becomes mandatory since i have not done either of those two things i am going to skip this question because it's non mandatory and no error will be thrown in this case similarly goes for blood bank and imaging and diagnostic services so this is the last step of my functional facility creation that details have been saved for this one as well the last step is to submit your facility here again we are asking authorization and along with that i'm asking you xhpr id auth okay now in case your system has certain designated verifiers as well we are asking you to provide us with hpr id auth verifier auth and auth verifier process is the same but this is a non mandatory field in case you do uh, get a source of information value from the hfr team with respect to your facility in case it needs to be web tagged as a verified entity then verifiers xhpr id auth also needs to be present that basically means your verifier also needs to have an hpr id since i am skipping the source of information i'll just mark it as a submitted entity we are going to skip auth verifier token as well Uh, most of the integrators will not need to worry about this last part. What Man Manika said regarding the verifier thing, because frankly, this is only on a uh, only on certain exceptional cases wherein we know that the other system has completely verified data already present that this is being uh, uh, provided on a case to case basis. So really, no need to worry on that uh, in, uh, that particular part. That's an optional field for everyone. so when we do execute this uh, submit api basically we are uh, doing a lot of validations in the back end saving the all the transactions in multiple data sets it might take a little bit longer time we'll work on how to optimize these uh, this particular timing part but once it is done you will get a facility id in response this is the previous response it's this one is still loading so you get a facility id here and then you can actually go and check it on the uh, hfr's public search page as well it will be available here So the last uh, facility that I did create in a similar format is this one, and all my uh, the respective, you know, fields that I had entered in the API are being reflected here as well. The source has been tagged as HFR because you're onboarding via the API right now, and as you have, uh, as we saw, we had uh, dentistry, homeopathy, and allopathy as the three system of medicine codes.
so your id has been generated i n i n 34100275 Uh, Nilin, can you please just uh, quickly refresh our uh, public search query? Yeah, I've done. Yeah, all right. So let's search. You have a facility, just be the one we just created, and all the respective fields are present here. So your facility ID has been created. The particular facility is tagged as a submitted entity in the system. It would definitely be going up to the district level verifier present in HFR systems for uh, approval. Um, that's it, Anshul. I think uh, I'm done with explanations. We can have the questions and. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Nivindu. So, uh, so everyone, uh, Monica has just taken you all through the entire uh, APIs and the demo. Uh, any queries that are there right now that we can address, we will take it up. If there is something that we cannot address right now, you can send them in later today also to uh, I think integration dot support at nh dot gov dot in. Minakshi, that's the right ID, right? And uh, we can just. Uh, Compile That's all the right. queries and then answer them also. Yeah. I'm just so any putting it that, that also. Yeah, yeah, that will be helpful. Thanks. So any queries, anyone? नम्रता जी व्हाट आप आप क्या नहीं समझे हैं आप थोड़ा एक ईमेल डाल दीजिए अगर लैंग्वेज के कारण अगर आप कुछ समझ में नहीं आया हो हम लोग टेक केयर करेंगे कि वो जो भी आपका कंसर्न है दैट इज एड्रेस्ड है ना आप एक ईमेल भेज दीजिए या फिर आप आ, अपना कंसर्न यहाँ चैट पे लिख दीजिए प्लीज ओके ओके मैम हाँ अगर और कोई क्वेरीज नहीं है किसी को देन हम सेशन को बंद खत्म करेंगे यहीं पे इफ देर आर नो मोर क्वेरीज वी वुड लाइक टू ब्रिंग अ क्लोजर टू द सेशन प्लीज आई डोंट सी एनी रेज हैंड अंशुल सो आई थिंक वी आर गुड टू गो हेड इन केस एनीबॉडी हैज एनी क्वेरीज प्लीज प्लीज फील फ्री टू रीच आउट टू अस राइट एन ईमेल और रेज अ ग्रीवियंस और रेज योर कंसर्न ऑन द डेव फोरम वी विल टेक इट अप Thank you, HFR team, for your help and for your time. And we thank all the integrators who have joined this session, and I hope it would be helpful for them. We'll be uploading this session on the uh, ABDM website as well as on YouTube. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.